Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. It's part two of my series on painting the base set of Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. We've done the men here. I hope you enjoyed that uh, video and you've painted them up yourself. Now we're getting on to the characters. I'm going to break this into two videos. This first one is going to be the base coats and washes. And at the end of this video, you'll still have miniatures that look pretty good. If you want to stop there and play with them, they'll still look good. If you want to go on, there's a second part and that will be the highlighting where we just take it up to the next level. In the meantime, however, let's get started. We're going to get onto those characters, do the base coats and washes. Here we go. Let's start off by having a look at the characters we'll be painting. This charming fellow is called Maggot. Next up we've got Bayor. Now, of course, you don't have to paint all these miniatures at once. If you're going to do the whole campaign with just a couple of miniatures, just paint a couple. This guy's Arev. Or Arev. I'm guessing at these pronunciations, of course. I'm not completely sure. Then we've got Ali. As you can see, there's a colour theme with each one of the characters, so I'll try and preserve that as I paint them. This one is Neve. Apparently this is an Irish name and it's pronounced Neve. I believe this was an extra character that came in the Kickstarter. Now before I start painting these, I'm going to get a scalpel, a nice sharp one, and do a little bit of cleaning up. There are very faint mould lines on most of these figures, and since they're character figures, I'm going to go to that little bit of extra trouble and clean off some of these mould lines. You can just scrape them off, as you can see I'm doing here. There's also a special purpose Games Workshop tool you can use for this kind of thing, but really a scalpel does exactly the same job. You can slice off uh, the mould lines carefully, or you can scrape them off. And of course, always be careful with your fingers when you're using sharp blades. Just go through and clean them up to whatever level you're comfortable with. You really don't have to make this perfect. Uh, you probably won't see it while you're playing the game, so just get rid of the, the worst offenders. Some of them are a little trickier than others. In this case, uh, the line goes through the uh, very detailed folds on this, which is really hard to clean up, but just do the best you can really, unless you're an absolute perfectionist and want to spend ages on this. Now that I've got all my figures ready, I'm going to prime them with Corax White by Citadel, the spray white. This one's really good quality, it is expensive, but it's the finest spray white primer I've found, so I use it for priming all of my miniatures. And there we go. And uh, remember, of course, when you're doing the primer that you go outside, use a gas mask and not, not breathe any of that in. I'm using a mixture of Kislev Flesh and Bugman's Glow for my flesh color. Of course, you can use any flesh colors you wish. Um, I'm just keeping this relatively simple and using the same color for all my characters. And for painting a zero sized Rosemary & Co. Kalinsky's Sable. Uh, these are not as expensive as Windsor & Newton, as I mentioned before in my last video, but they're excellent. So I'll mix a little bit of this colour on my wet palette. Of course, my wet palette is by Redgrass Games. Uh, they've got a Kickstarter coming up, I think, for a new design of their wet palette. And they also have a new uh, paper or membrane design that they use for that. So um, keep an eye on my social media because I will do a shout out when that starts. I use red grass stuff, uh, their palettes and uh, their clippers and they also have brushes as well, though I don't use those as much. Um, so uh, they have a great range of products, I really recommend checking them out and they're lovely people too. So just fill in the flesh areas here, it's pretty easy to see which area is which with a close look at the miniature. I use a head loop which is a thing I put over my head with a magnifying glass on it makes it a lot easier for me to paint because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Even with glasses I find it hard to see the detail at this size, so uh, I wear this silly look looking head loop thing and it really helps in my painting. There's Maggot done. On to the next one, this is Neve. And you don't have to be too super neat with this kind of painting. This is just the base flesh color. 
I usually go from flesh and then outward through the levels of garments and that way you can uh, clean up anything that came before so if some of this flesh color goes over onto some of the material later on when you paint the material you can cover up those errors Of course, mix a bit of water with your paint always so it flows on nice and smoothly. The worst mistake I always see fledgling miniature painters uh, make is to not mix enough water with their um, paints and put, putting them on too thickly. If you put them on too thickly, you're going to obscure the detail and it'll look gluggy and it just doesn't work. So put in enough water so it flows smoothly but doesn't get really thin. So after I've done all the flesh colours on all my figures and let them dry, I'm going to start thinking about what colours I'm going to uh, paint these miniatures. I'm using um, a bit of inspiration for other paint jobs I've seen online and also just looking at the artwork and just coming up with my own colour schemes as I go along. So starting off with a bit of a shabti bone, I'm going to paint the bits of skeleton and bone that are hanging from his belt and that he's carrying around for some strange reason. Now of course pick your own colours. If you don't like these colours just choose your own. These are just guidelines. The fun thing about miniature painting is that it's creative. You can pick any colours you like. If you want your guy to be pink and purple and green then go for it. As long as you're happy with the results that's what counts. There's no perfect way to paint miniatures. So he's also wearing a kind of skull cap there. So that goes the bone colour. Next up I'm taking some, what's this one called? Oh, Scrag Brown of course. Scrag Brown and this is the colour I'm going to paint his robes. Frustratingly I found that this one had dried up a bit. This happened in the last video too. There's a few of my paints drying up which is very frustrating indeed. So I'm seeing if I can get some colour out of this poor old pot. I've since replaced it. I might have just enough to paint the robes. Oh, that's pretty watery. Let's see what I can do. Well, in the end, I got a bigger brush and mixed some water in with my dried up pot and managed to scrape out some more colour. And eventually I managed to get enough pigment together to paint all of his robes. Next up, Storm Vermin Fur. This is a nice grey colour, but it's got a little bit of warmth to it. And I'm using this to paint his moustache and beard. You can see there I just added a little bit more water because it wasn't flowing quite as nicely as I wanted to. The next colour is Steel Legion Drab, which goes quite well with this sort of browny orangey scheme I seem to be putting together here. I'm using this colour to paint his various and sundry belts and buckles and bits. And remember you don't have to be absolutely precise. You can be a little bit rough with this because after you've uh, finished this and it's dried you'll be giving it a wash and that will go into all these little crevices and, and f delineate the areas between the shapes. And you can also clean up later if you want to. He appears to have a snake wrapped around his arm, so I'm using Talon sand to paint that, which has got a little bit more yellow in it. And you can see how all the colors I'm choosing have a sort of tonal range, a kind of warm, yellowish, orangey kind of tonal range. So they work together nicely. Picking those kind of things is just something that comes with experience and also just steal other people's colour schemes. If you see a colour scheme you like online, 
uh, download the picture and use it as reference for your own paint job. A nice warm brass colour will go nicely with these colours, so I'm using Rune Lord Brass. And painting his shoulder pad or shoulder armour there. And any other metallic areas like the top of his staff. Now at this stage I usually uh, paint the bases, just the base colour, so I'm using Eshin Grey. You can paint the bases any colour you want of course, you might prefer a dirt colour or I tend to go for grey because it's just a nice neutral colour and this way I can paint the base and the rocks at the same time. Um, but you might want to go for Steel Legion Drab uh, for a more dirt kind of base, completely up to you. The next one I'm going to work on is Arev. As you can see, I've already done his uh, flesh colours. So I can get some inspiration for colours from the illustration. I'm starting here with Talon Sand. And I'm using this to paint around his uh, uh, waist and the fabric that he's got hanging from his waist. Next up, good old Dryad Bark. An excellent all-purpose dark brown. Using that for his hair. Also for his beard, and while you're there, you might as well do a couple of little dots for his eyes as well. It's the dark area. And I'm also using the brown to outline his necklace. Steel Legion Drab again for his pants. Not forgetting to paint in those little areas uh, that are crossed by ropes holding his sh shoes up. There's quite a lot of detail in these little miniatures. Now this pot has got abaddon black on written on it, but actually it's Avaland Sunset. For some reason I ordered Avaland Sunset and I got it, but I got it in a pot that says abaddon black. One of those little mysteries of life. And I'm using this colour to paint the wheat that's poking out of his satchel. XV88. Again, I've got a quite a similar tonal range here that I that I do to Maggot, and um, I'm not sure quite why I did this, but um, I can try and make these a little bit more distinctive later on when I go onto the highlighting stage. But at the time, I just went for uh, browns and and kind of you know browny earthy colours for these ones. I don't want them to be too distinctive colour wise. Uh, kind of supposed to be realistic rather than stylized. There his shoes all done. And I'll use that colour to paint the uh, rope on his scythe as well. Now I'm using Dryad Bark again and painting that satchel. Nice contrasting colour to, to the rest. And I'll use the same colour to paint the haft of his scythe. And finally, Lead Belcher. A good dark iron colour. I'll use that for the blade of the scythe. And after I've painted that, I'll just paint in the base. And there's the base colours done for Arev. 
Oh, one last thing, a bit of Retributor armor. And I'm going to use that for his armband. And there it is, just painting in the band of gold he has around his arm. Next up is Bayor, and obviously he's much more of a sort of purpley tone to him. So I'll be using sort of blues and purples, Demon Demonette Hide and Thunderhawk Blue as a basis. And I mix these two colours together to give me just the right kind of grey purpley blue that I want for his kilt. Again, I didn't want to go too bright into the purple or too much into the blue. There we go, that's his kilt or whatever that piece of material is. Tunic, perhaps. And then I'm going to use the same colour for his beard. I'm not sure why, why probably because it was just easy to use. Makes him look a bit different. And his hair as well. But of course there are brown areas and Steel Legion Drab jumps in again. And I'm using that for his boots. Dryad Bark again. You can see which colours I use quite a lot of. And I'm using that dark contrasting brown for his pants. A bit of a brighter metal iron breaker for his hammer. And at this stage I'm just going to use this to paint over his greaves as well. Are they called greaves around the arm or is that around the leg? I forget. The things that are going around his arms. There's some more metal detailing here as well. And on the back. Finally, don't forget the little haber hang from his waist. I'm going back to Steel Legion Drab to paint his belt. And also his shoulder pad. And then Eshin Grey is a nice dark grey colour. I'll use that for the haft of his hammer. And there he is, he's about done base colour wise. Of course I'll paint the base, put him aside to dry, on to the next one. And that next one is a lie. And as you can see, she's very much of a green disposition. I've done the flesh colours. Now I'm going to go green and brown. Mournfang brown is a colour that goes better with green, or a brown that goes better with green. So I'll use that for her boots and leggings. And also for the satchel she has. Not forgetting the strap of the satchel and her armbands. For the base coat of her blonde hair, I'm using Xandri Dust, kind of yellow brown. Then I need some green, starting off with Caliban green, nice dark green. And 
and also Warboss Green. And I'm mixing a bit of that Warboss Green into the Caliban Green just to lighten it up a bit. So I get a, a nice dark green but not too dark. Remember you don't have to stick to the uh, official Games Workshop colours, you can mix them together and do all kinds of things. Come up with exactly the right colour that you want. And I'll use this green to paint the other areas of her clothing. I'm also painting this uh, greenery covered staff that she's carrying. Quite a lot of green on this one as you can see. Steel Legion Drab again to paint the staff. And finally Dryad Bark just to basically fill in any other areas. Once I've washed this I can go back after these dark brown areas and really paint them any colour I want. Uh, this is used as a sort of base colour. They will be brown but um, I'll be matching exactly what kind of brown I want to use when I get to that stage and I might want to pick out more detail at that stage as well. For the moment I'm just painting them all dark brown. Our last hero is Neve, who was the Kickstarter extra, I think. And I'm using Doom Bull Brown here. It's a nice reddy brown. And Avaland Sunset, Sunset again. And also Mephiston Red. And as you can see, I put these three colors together and I've got a little range of colors together. There's Doom Bill Brown and then it's mi being mixed with the yellow and the red and that gives me a kind of tonal range that I can use for this figure. The great thing about using a wet palette is that you can, you can mix these colors on the wet palette and not worry about them drying out while you're trying to paint. Um, and sometimes it's good to work out your colors on the palette before you actually put them on the miniature like this. So I'm using straight Doom Bill Brown for her arm wrappings and then her skirt has a mixture of Avalan Sunset and Mephiston Red to give her sort of orangey colour decided to go a little bit brighter there and I'm using the same color to paint the rest of her top as well. Gold goes well with these colors so Retributor armor again and I'll use that to paint her armbands. Iron Breaker straight metallic color. Sometimes I like to mix uh, gold and silver together and get this kind of uh, bronzy color. I don't know if it's really bronze but it's just kind of more subtle goldy silver color. I don't know <laughs> but it looks good. Xandri dust for the fur around her shoulders. Dryad Bark to paint her eye patch. And finally I'm just going to put a bit more Mephiston Red in with that uh, colour I used for the skirt and use that for her hair.
dryad bark just to do some more of those little detailed areas and she's just about done for the base coats. Now once all those are thoroughly dry it's time to move on to washes. Seraphim Sepia and Agrax Earthshade are your friends as always. Great for washing your figures. Again make sure everything's thoroughly thoroughly dry. The last thing you want to do is put on a wash and find that your paint isn't dry yet. And also be very careful not to tip these pots over. I believe that new red grass uh, wet palette that's coming out has a special thing that attaches to the palette that you can put your uh, wash bottles on so they don't tip over. So I'm looking forward to that. Now it's just a matter of pick, picking the right tone here. This guy's sort of quite uh, in the orangey browny spectrum. So I'm using Seraphim Sepia pretty much all over the figure. Seraphim Sepia is great for flesh colors, um, but really it's great for all over here. Maybe a little bit in the darker areas, I can mix a bit of Agrax Earthshade with it. You don't have to be too neat with this, of course. And here I am using Agrax Earthshade for his um, uh, armor areas and for his uh, tunic or cloak, whatever you call it. Just so I can go a bit darker on that. And aren't washes wonderful? A base coat is all very well, but a wash just makes it come alive as it delineates all those details and areas. It's great. You can see a bit more seraphim sepia in the face, but I'm not being too neat. As always, if it pulls too much in the recesses, just dry off your brush and um, soak it up a bit. Here I'm using Agrax Earthshade over the grey for my base as well, so what a multi-purpose wash it is. And there he is, ready to dry. And once he's dried, we'll go into the highlight stage. Next up for washes is Arev. Again, using these two washes where appropriate, Seraphim Sepia on the flesh, Agrax Earthshade a bit more on the clothes. And of course things can look pretty messy at this stage, but don't panic, it will dry and look better. But do be sure to pull up the wash if it's gathered too much in one spot, because that will not dry looking good if, it's, if there's too much of it. You want it wiped off the highlights and not pulling too heavily in the recesses. Next up is Neve, very much on the Seraphim Sepia for this one. I don't want her shadows to be too dark. I really should use another brush for this. As you can see, it's a little bit hard on my nice brush. I'm a bit lazy when it comes to things like that. I always pretend that I'm going to care more for my brushes and I never do. Next up is Ali. Sarah from Sepia for the flesh and hair. And really when I'm washing the uh, gray areas I could have used, uh, sorry when I'm washing the green areas I could have used a green wash but I didn't bother at this stage. Just using Agrax Earthshade to give me those dark shadows. Again, there's plenty of time for precision at the highlight stage. At this stage, I'm just getting down the base coats and the washes. Now, Bayor. Doing the flesh areas first. And then Agrax Earthshade on the rest. You could use a black wash on the metal areas, but I'm happy with the brown at this stage. And there he is. Let's have a look at them all now that they're dry. And really, these are good enough to put on the table and play with, really. But they're going to look even better once we've given them a highlight. 
that'll be the next step. But as you can see, as when those washes dry, the figures are starting to look pretty good. It's remarkable how good it can look with just a base coat and a wash. But of course it's the highlight that makes all the difference. It really makes them pop and brings them to life. We will do that next. Stick with me. Come back in episode 3 and we'll do all the highlighting and finish off these character figures and then we'll move on to the monsters. See you then and good gaming.